Hey, what's up, everybody? Ricky Carruth here. Super excited for today. We're going to get into some YouTube training. This is something that uh, I don't get into a whole lot. So that's why I wanted to bring this to the table for you guys. I know a lot of you have asked me a lot about video marketing, YouTube. Uh, you know, you see other agents crushing it on YouTube, building their business. You see agents who only use YouTube to build their business. And um, so that's why I wanted to do this to bring someone on here who is actually doing it and uh, has been extremely successful uh, by doing so. And, and if you've been following me long enough, you know that I'm not um, I'm not biased towards uh, any type of lead gen. I don't care how someone you know gets leads. You every single lead gen activity works. Um, I've said it over and over and over and over again. Um, I know people that, you know, only do YouTube, only do Facebook, uh, do Facebook groups, uh, only do open houses, um, only do networking events and sphere, uh, only do direct mail. I know agents who only do direct mail. They do nothing else. And they're highly, highly successful. Take Jordan Cohen, for example, the number one Remax agent in the world. And all he does and did for a long time was direct mail. He's recently, you know, just here recently got on Instagram and started posting houses. He doesn't even do videos of himself. He just posts uh, pictures of homes. Um, and you know what? He's selling. He's selling homes. He's selling some of these five and 10 and $20 million homes by um, putting pictures on Instagram and stuff like that. But it's not his forte doing videos and or cold calling, you know, like Jordan will never cold call. He never did, never will, but he's the number one Remax agent in the world through direct mail. So I'm just saying all that to say that it's been obvious to me from day one that um, there's plenty of ways to skin a cat. Um, and the, the real bottom line behind it all is what works best for you. Um, you got to figure out what you're comfortable with, what works best for you in terms of getting in front of the most people possible to build your name, to build your database, to build that book of business of people who know and never forget you. That's the name of the game, guys. Market share, right? The, the market share is the number of people in your market who know and never, ever forget who you are. And I think at the end of the day, however you get that accomplished, it doesn't really matter. For me, you guys know my story. You know, I'm just like, let me just call them. But not everybody's built like that. I'm a high D. And which means that I can go to a listing appointment with no listing presentation. I don't have to know stats. I don't care about analytics. I don't care about price per square foot. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to get in front of them. I'm going to wing it because I'm falling back on the fact that I'm here and I care and I want to help. That's what I fall back on. Not everybody's built like that. Some people are analytical. They want to know every last detail of every statistic and, and have an entire presentation put together before they go to the listing presentation. So I understand people are different and have different ways of doing things, and I'm empathetic towards it and appreciate it to the fullest. And that's why I wanted to bring my, my guest on today to show you guys what is possible on YouTube and give you the exact blueprint. Let's give a warm welcome to my boy, Levi Lassick, <laughs> like What's classic the with an L. That's right. Classic. What up, bro? What's up, Ricky? How are you? Good, man. Yeah, good to see you, bro. You, uh, how many grams of protein did you <laughs> get today, I'm not, man? I'm not, I'm not on the exact science of a gram of per body pound yet. Uh, I haven't mapped that out. So, but I, I've tried that a couple of times, dude. It's way too many. It's a lot. Yeah, I know. You got to eat a lot. So. It's too many. So, man, okay, dude, let's, let's break this thing down for a second. You, Sold $75 million last year on YouTube, right? Uh, wrong. 86.1. 86.1. Okay. I don't know where I got the 75 mil from. I don't know where I where that came from. Okay. Still, still a good number. Still 86.1. I mean, tomato, tomato, right? Like, yeah. it's just whatever. Um, you sold a lot. <laughs> you sold a lot of real estate. Um, you're in Dallas. Okay. Yes, um, 
you know, uh, that's, that's a big relocation place, right? People are going there, relocating there and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, we definitely had some wind in our sails. I mean, huge relocation market, corporations come, I mean, they're moving here, moving their whole businesses uh, here, you know, Elon Musk making a lot of waves as well. Things like that. Tech companies getting out of California. So yes, we're in a, a pretty good, perfect storm right now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you believe that even agents who aren't in great relocation markets can also succeed with YouTube? Oh yeah. We've got an agent. I'll actually cover that. Uh, Jonathan in Temecula County of uh, California, where, you know, they say everybody's moving out of that area, but he's been very successful. He's done almost uh, 200,000 in commissions from his channel. And he started it last year, whenever the market like completely tanked and whenever everybody seemed to disappear, he started his channel and that's what helped him survive over the last eight months. Right, right. So I know you're going to get into your story a little bit and you're going to you're going to walk us through um, four key points here. What are those key points? Well, we're going to cover channel build out um, on the. So we're going to cover actually pro passive prospecting principles and then passive prospecting uh, the, the, the process. And so uh, what we're going to cover really is a couple of different forms of marketing. You know why I believe YouTube is so powerful. But then we're going to get into channel build out, content creation, uh, you know, SEO optimization and then lead conversion, which is really how everything works. So this is kind of like the why and the, and the, and the how. Yeah. Guys, you're going to be able to walk away today being able to go out there with some knowledge to go start your YouTube channel if you haven't started your YouTube channel or if you have a YouTube channel, go out there and actually optimize your YouTube channel right around building your business with the platform. And I think that's what the, the, what the most important part of today is, is that we walk away with the knowledge that we need to go out there and absolutely crush it. Um, okay. So in Dallas did 86.1 million last year. How long have you been in real estate? Uh, about two and a half years, two and a half years, <laughs> two and a half years. Do what? Yeah. Do what? Yep. I didn't even know that, bro. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. So when did you start YouTube immediately at, at when you started in real estate or was it later? Yep. Immediately started, uh, only did YouTube uh, because I was, uh, you know, I, I lost my business and everything really in 2020 whenever the world shut down. So I, and I was 41 years old. And so I was sitting there going, I'm 41 years old. The whole world is shut down. Like, what am I going to do? What's my next steps? And how do I start over without starting over? And uh, yeah, I'll get into that a little bit, but I was, you know, I got a friend who's been trying to get me into real estate for 20 years. I, I really never wanted to be a real estate agent. And so I kind of avoided it as long as possible because I, I just perceive them being that, you know, person that bugs you at Starbucks, you know, and then hands you a oh. card. Yeah, so I was like, well, if I'm going to get into it, let me see if there's a way I could attract business uh, versus just go out and pursue all the time. I had been in sales for 20 plus years, love sales, hated prospecting really. Uh, and, I, and I say hate with the fact that it was kind of like a necessary evil, right? If you wanted to be the best salesperson, you had to be the best prospector. You had to always be digging up business. And I was just kind of like a little burnout on that. I was kind of like, eh, you know, I want to see if there's a different way. Is there a way to actually bring people in that want to work with you from the get go? So. Okay. So we're halfway through 2023. So you started the business of January, 2021. December of 2020. Yep. December of 2020. So that was like after we were kind of trying to recover from the pandemic. And so you were a pandemic, you were a COVID agent. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. You're yeah, you, like, cause if you, if you, if you got your license in December, that means you started your classes like mid year in, while we were basically shut down and had the uncertainty of uh, COVID and stuff. Right. Yeah, somewhere around summer. Uh, so and, you're one of the ones who were bored at the house, locked up, quarantining, and um, you know thought, oh, I'll get my license and get rich quick kind of deal. Um, like you're one of those guys, and like most of those agents are getting out of the business right now. Uh, actually, no, I was. I actually spent a lot of money over the summer trying to uh, not be a real estate agent. So. Uh, but as I started to run out of money, I was like, well, maybe I will be a real estate agent. So it was, I started, to, I moved into it very reluctantly, actually. Wow. And I had no idea. I had no idea because I had no pulse on the market. I had no idea like 
you know, people were just going crazy over properties or anything like that. It was really just kind of, I moved into it reluctantly, but I was really looking for a marketing plan. So I wanted to see if I could figure out a plan and that's what would help me get into real estate. I didn't just say, oh, I'm going to get into real estate and figure it out. I actually did some research over the summer of 2020 after I blew through a lot of money trying to do a lot of other stuff. And, and then I realized, okay, well, maybe I'm going to make that shift, but could I actually figure out a way to, to bring business to me? And how do you do that? You know, shaking hands, kissing babies was still kind of uh, out of the norm at that point. People were still a little, you know, not a lot of events were going on. So it's not like you were just going to go out and network right then and there. Um, even though Texas was open a lot sooner than most places, but things were still rocky. And so I was just looking for a way to generate and I had zero social media presence. Um, I was that person that always avoided it, thought it mm -hmm. was kind of petty, silly, people just bragging all the time. And yeah. I never had tried to build a business through social, but I also knew, hey, it's it's probably time to do that. And I knew other people were doing it as well. Wow. Wow. So um so you got into the business reluctantly. Yeah, yeah. like that this is all like um this is all kind of um, inspirational to the point of um, anybody can do this because most people, when they come in reluctant, they don't make it because you got to be all in. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, most of the people that got in during COVID didn't make it right because they, they were scrambling around trying to figure out a get rich quick thing. And then and then come to find out, you know, you sell 86 million. So what did you sell the first year? Two thousand twenty one. 33 and a half million. Wow, dude, your first year. So yeah. how many transactions was that? 64. Holy shit. Okay, 64 <laughs> transactions. And what was the percentage were those like, was it how many listings? I'll just say that because it's probably very few. It was 99% uh, buyers. Right. So <laughs> like three, like one or two of those were listings. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't even know if we did a listing that first year. So that's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. And then the second year did, was the 86 million. Were, were there, you know, some listings there or all buyers? Uh, I would say probably about 95% buyers. Uh, we did some listings in there, probably uh, four or five. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. I think I have a pretty good handle here of your business guys. If you have questions for Levi, um, at the end here, I'll, I'll say, okay, what questions you guys got? Be ready to put it in the chat. We'll do a good 10 minutes plus of Q and a at the end. Um, if you have any questions that, uh, that we don't touch on. So, okay, cool. You're going to take us through a little presentation here and, and touch on all the, uh, all the key components here to build and, uh, a YouTube, uh, <laughs> foundation of a business, right? Absolutely. All right, guys, you ready for this? If you're ready, comment in the chat that you are ready. Let's get it. And let me know. I can't see. Are the slides up? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah, we want to get we, this is what we like to call passive prospecting. Now, you know, the funny thing is, is Ricky talks about he would rather just make the phone call because you have to talk to somebody anyways, which I completely agree with. So we even though we call this passive prospecting it's still active conversion, right? So even when we get an inbound lead, we still have to call that lead, establish rapport, you know, build some credibility and, and solidify that relationship. So there is still active uh, conversion in there. But uh, here's the deal. I always give a shout out to my business partner, Travis Plum. He was very instrumental in the success. And uh, Ricky kind of touched on this, but I had this queued up just in case, sold zero homes in 2020, released the first YouTube video on December 5th of 2020, and I sold zero homes in Q1 of 2021. It took about 90 days to get the first deal under contract. Now, I went all in on YouTube. Was This was the only thing I focused on. I did not try to do anything Levi, can you go back to that last screen i messed yeah. up for a second i didn't get i'm sure everybody didn't read that okay do you see it now uh zero homes yep yep okay go through that for me yeah i sold zero homes in 2020 you know started uh released the first youtube video december 5th of 2020 and that also means i sold zero homes in q1 of 2021 uh, because it took about 90 days to get the first deal under contract. And again, I focused only on YouTube. I did not try anything else. I'm an all in. So even though I'd gotten uh, real estate reluctantly, Ricky, I am an all in type of guy. So once I, I wanted to figure out kind of like one method, I could just 
go 100% on, and that was YouTube. So this is what happened over the last nine months of 2021 is we ended up generating 690 leads from the channel, closed the 64 transactions, 33 and a half million in volume and right at a million 7,000 in commissions. And that was our first full year in real estate. Uh, so what I love about YouTube is a compound effect. And in 2022, we ended up generating 1,958 leads from the channel. So that was 5.4 leads per day inbound. That means people were calling us. And uh, we did 86.1 million in volume and right at 2.3 million in commissions. So, you know, I know there's some newer agents on here as well. You got to ask yourself, okay, that's this. These were questions to myself. Like, why do agents fail? How do I avoid those pitfalls? Average agent usually comes into the business with less than $5,000 to their name, which is why they typically go towards cold calling or door knocking or uh, sphere of influence because that's more of their time versus their money. Uh, but even according to NAR, an agent with two years or less experience on their website, it says they the average is $8,800 a year is what they make. So that, that will flush them out of the business very quickly if they don't uh, do a transaction. Rejection. None of, uh, you know, None of, not a lot of us are built like Ricky, but you can do it. But a lot of people will get rejected a few times and then they'll be like, okay, I'm out. But you got to be really effective at lead generation. If you cannot start to generate some leads one way or another, you know, really by, uh, you know, making videos or talking to people, then you're going to be out of business very quickly. So this is what got me really kind of started is I started to understand, I started to wonder, okay, where are the eyeballs? That's what I wanted to figure out first. Where are people looking and searching for information? So I started to look at suburbs of Dallas uh, on Google. Well, I started to find search volume and I found that like Plano, Texas, a major suburb of Dallas got searched 90,500 uh, times per month. But whenever I looked at that search volume on YouTube, it got 834,000 searches per month. So that's 10 times the search volume on YouTube than it is on Google. So that right there really sparked an interest for me to say, I think people really want to see these neighborhoods and areas. And that's what allowed me to discover really passive prospecting principles, okay? So I want to get into this, which is what makes this so powerful, why YouTube is so effective. Most uh, people have been exposed to and you've probably conducted in your own business interruption type marketing. And that can be labeled as, you know, cold calling, door knocking, TV commercials, billboards, magazine ads, uh, mailers. All of that really is coming at us in times when usually we're not in a position that we're ready, willing or able to buy. Now, of course, you can generate business that way, but it's, it's the same reason why, you know, you could see a dog food commercial 10 times a day doesn't mean you're going to run out and buy dog food. But the second you pour out the last bowl of dog food, you know, none of us want Fluffy to die. And so you say, OK, now I have intention. I need to go buy dog food. I'm going to go to the store directly to the dog food aisle and buy it. Or maybe I'll order it on Amazon. So when you have intention to buy something, you do not need any marketing or advertising at all to convince you to do that. And let me know in the chat, do you believe people become intentional about buying or selling a home? And that's the key factor. And we know this. If you look at the analytics on, on the back end of our channel, uh, they say 80 percent of the online traffic is from mobile. But 55 percent of our traffic comes from TV, computer and tablet. Those are research devices. Look at this. Almost 30 percent of our traffic comes from TV. That means people are sitting on their couch, maybe even laying in their bed watching our videos. Do you believe those people are intentional if they're sitting on their couch watching Dallas, Texas real estate videos? But they say attention spans are dead these days, uh, which is why you're supposed to be a dancing real estate agent on TikTok, right? But again, our analytics tell us a different story. Average view durations on TV, nine minutes and 39 seconds. Look at computer, five minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, tablet, six minutes and 23 seconds. So that's that means people are dialed in. It's because that's why they're, they're researching. But even better, YouTube's algorithm is so powerful that when YouTube suggests videos, because it's only going to suggest videos to people that they that it believes they will watch, the average view duration is 10 minutes and 48 seconds. That is extremely powerful. If somebody watches over 10 minutes of your video for the very first time, they will get to know you very quickly. And that's why in 2022, you'll love this, Ricky, our average contact to under contract was 51 days. So we did 184 transactions in 2022 on average under contract in less than two months. That's how intentional these people were whenever they reached out to us. So that's the difference, but global versus local. 
Have you ever uh, marketed to another state or another country? Probably not. Have you ever uh, cold called or door knocked at two or three in the morning? Probably not. But look at this. Our channel is getting 69 views at two in the morning, 70 views at three in the morning, 72 views at four in the morning. So the channel is reaching people on their timeline when they want to research, when they're looking for information. And you would never do this. And on top of that, two in the morning in Dallas could be nine in the morning in the UK. It could be uh, 5 p.m. in Japan. We get this all the time. Like we just helped this person move here, Elizabeth. And she said, look, we're originally from Florida, but have been living abroad in Belgium for the past six years. We're getting relocated to Texas, going to be working in Dallas. So we would never market to Belgium. But because we have a YouTube channel and somebody's getting transferred from Belgium, guess what? They're not just going to come into town and look at homes randomly. We got this the other day. Been watching your channel for a year now. It's been great help. We'll be migrating to Dallas from the Philippines. OK, we help that person. We tell people move from Japan, from Australia, from South Africa, from Canada. We would never, ever market to those areas. But because we have a YouTube channel, we now have a global audience and we're able to help people from all over the world world. All right. And so the next principle is my one of my favorites is most agents tell me they don't get started on YouTube because it takes time. YouTube does not take you time. It makes you time. Look at this. One video took me 30 minutes to make, but it's been watched 11,600 hours. That's like making a profit of 11,595 hours on my 30 minute investment but it gets even better because YouTube doesn't just make you time, it compounds your time. And so our channel, for example, was watched 1,514 hours in one day. You divide that by 24 hours in a day, that's equivalent to 63 days worth of prospecting. All right, now, in one month, our channel has watched 11,800 hours. You divide that by 24 hours in a day, that's equivalent to 1.34 years worth of prospecting. But last year, our channel has watched 104,600 hours in one year. That's equivalent to almost 12 years worth of prospecting. So that's why we're doing the business we're doing is because we're compounding our time. We're turning one day into 2.1 months, one month into 1.34 years, and one year into 1.2 decades worth of prospecting. And that's going to bring a lot more people. Now, Active prospecting, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it is. And I've done it. I've, I did it for 20 years. It's why all sales training exists. It's why people join lives. It's why you're on this training right now, because you want to learn how to better your skills, get better at building rapport, establishing credibility and developing relationships. So, you know, that's why people hire mentors and, and coaches and go to conferences, because they're always trying to figure out how do I how do I get somebody to know, like, and trust me so they'll work with me? Well, that can also come with a ton of rejection. But for me, one of the, the biggest things about prospecting, I, I mean, I did it because it was necessary. And I was always the best prospector, which made me the best salesperson. But it, I always felt like I spent a lot of my time doing it. 90% it seemed like I was always out there pursuing. And again, nothing wrong with that. It's just a different method of doing it. But the deal is, is that um, passive prospecting, it's easy, right? <laughs> There's really zero rejection because nobody has ever called me and said, Levi, I hate your videos. I'll, I'm, I'm not going to do business with you. So I don't know who doesn't want to work with me. The clients walk themselves through the entire sales process. The video builds the relationship for me. So that way, whenever the clients call us, you know, they're already, they've already made the decision. They want to work with us, you know? And so there's really no selling on our part. They already feel like they know us. And this happened every single day in the text and emails that we would get. For example, like these are four different emails, not to read it all, but I want you to notice the amount of volume. When's the last time somebody ever sent you a full page email saying, Hey, I really love that, that postcard you sent me. So here's all of my information, but because they watch videos, they feel like they know you. So this is the first time they ever reach out to us and they will tell us everything we need to know. Price ranges, beds, baths, their kids' names, their kids' social security numbers. Sometimes it's crazy, but look at the key phrases they put in here. Like we would like to check if you would be able to help us find a home. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. If you have some time to talk about this, feel free to give me a call. So it's like they're asking me, do I have time? Am I willing to work with them versus me, you know, going after them, trying to get them to work with me? 
but it gets even better. I'm going to play this real short video so that you can hear phone calls. This is what would happen every every single time I would pick up the phone. Hi, Levi. Is this the, the Living in Dallas, Texas YouTube channel? <laughs> that's me. Are you guys just folks on the YouTube channel, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that does. Okay, okay. I know exactly who I'm talking to then. <laughs> but this is regarding the Living in Dallas, Texas channel, right? What, are you Levi from the video, from the YouTube video? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's good talking to you. But I saw some of your videos, and that's how I found you. So I'm um, actually very helpful. My but... wife and I have seen your guys' videos on YouTube and kind of caught our interest. I'm that I'm posting on uh, YouTube, but very interesting where you share shared the information. I don't know if we should ask for autographs or something. We've mm -hmm. been following you on YouTube like you're a superstar. I said that I'd reach out to you guys because I've been watching your YouTube videos. <laughs> Hey, good to talk to you guys. Been looking at your videos on YouTube. I feel like I'm talking to the movie star. I just saw your YouTube video. I'm sure you get a lot of calls like this. Like some of your videos are literally like the first videos I see. So I'm just like, let me call this guy. You know, let me text this gentleman. Thank you. Uh, you have a nice video. We were really impressed. And that's why we wanted to get in touch with you. I saw your videos and it actually helped me. We liked uh, your videos and your knowledge and your energy level. And All the information that you gave us on the uh, YouTube channel about both of those spots, it looks good. You watched pretty much all your videos. Uh, I found you through uh, YouTube, actually. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of your videos lately. Let me, let me commend you, man. Good job on that. Great videos on YouTube. Yep. Yeah, no, I've been looking at your stuff and it's been helpful. Your YouTube channel helps out a lot. You like to watch those videos, kind of get a lay of the land, you know. But... You make great videos, by the way. I, I, I enjoy watching them. We learned a great deal just watching your, uh, your YouTube videos, which are so there you go. I mean, that should give you a good idea of what it's like whenever I pick up the phone. I mean, people are excited. They're actually surprised that I was the one answering the phone. They thought I was going to have a team member answering the phone. So this is what led to the passive prospecting process. OK, and this is what we're going to get into. You can take away some tips right now uh, if you have a YouTube channel and you feel like you've been stuck on something. So if we get into channel build out, first of all, you know, uh, I researched this before I got started. So as I was telling Ricky, I spent a lot of money over the summer trying to not be a real estate agent. But whenever I decided, well, maybe I'm going to head that direction, I wanted to find a way to generate business. When I finally figured out YouTube was the way I wanted to go, I started to study and say, how can I make this the most effective possible? First of all, I didn't name it after myself because I was not a search term. Nobody knew who I was. I had zero brand. And so I named it after one of the top search terms in Dallas so that it would probably, hopefully, likely get found a little bit easier, right? So, uh, and then on top of that, the call to action in the middle, it's it's very big. And, and you got to think about people on YouTube. These are researchers, right? They're on here to consume content. They're looking to learn. So we put learn about living in Dallas, Texas. If I put Levi Lassick, real estate agent, you know, here's my phone number, my email, call me to buy, sell, or invest. That's uh, that doesn't really give them any value. It doesn't say anything. But somebody who's researching will say, oh, this channel is all about living in Dallas, Texas. So they'll likely stick around for the information versus trying to connect with me as a person. So I'm putting the information in between me and that potential client. Then I'd put this visual on the left hand side because. Um, I figured we'd probably get a lot of out of town or out of state people. So, uh, you know, we and we did get a lot of calls from California, New York and Illinois, especially during those last couple of years when they were trying to get out of those high restrictive states. So when somebody from those areas came here, it was like instant connection for them. Right. It painted that picture, that visual, even making this like a little yellow taxi cab coming from New York or a green station wagon coming from the West Coast or business people flying down from Chicago. So that gave them immediate connection, helped them feel like, oh, that could be us, you know, making that cross country trip. So this was very intentional. But here on the right hand side, this is probably one of the most important things is most agents will link all their social medias on here. And, uh, and that's usually TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, which are all really short form platforms. Now you've worked hard to get somebody to your channel in the first place. Why send them to a short form platform where, where they're likely gonna watch cat videos anyway? So don't take them off your channel. 
This is our number one click link in our entire channel is to book a call with us. So we only want people to leave the channel if they want to book a call with that. So and then we give the incentive of let's meet in person, right? Because once people watch several of your videos, they develop a relationship with you and they want to get to know you. So that incentive of meeting in person on video really uh, helps them pull the trigger. And uh, Travis and I are both combat veterans, so we, we put veteran-owned business up there as well because that will also help make a connection with people. So whatever you have uh, that you can help establish that rapport when people come to your channel for the very first time, you're, that's how you're likely going to get them to stick around. Then if you look at content creation strategies, all right, so uh, these, these types of videos will work in any market. There's a couple of others as well, but these are some of the top four. Vlog tours, actually taking people out in the neighborhood. So anybody can go online and look at what's inside and outside of a home. They can maybe even go on Google Street View, but it's still kind of clunky and, and you have to zip past, you know, sometimes houses. And so we take them out in the neighborhood, walk them around, you know, just it's, it's almost like they're walking right beside us on the sidewalk. And we're just having a conversation with them, showing the neighborhood, showing them the homes across the street, the homes next door, the community center, the pool, you know, all these different things, the Chipotle around the corner, right? These are very important subjects about living in a neighborhood. But that really gets them uh, to be able to see the picture of living in that area. Then you look at uh, map tours. Uh, this blew me away. This was a simple experiment, just getting on a Zoom and sharing my screen and walking people around the map of one of the suburbs. Now, anybody can go online and look at a map, but they can't get your perspective and your uh, stories and your experiences to help navigate that map and really give them the, the perspective from your viewpoint. So that's really popular. Pros and cons. I mean, may sound cheesy. You'll probably see some out there. But again, they are very popular. People like to know the good and the bad about living in an area. And then if you do any type of list videos, top five neighborhoods, top six suburbs, something like that, list videos can also do very well and can help you double down on, on neighborhoods with additional content. But then you can get into SEO optimization, search engine optimization. Now, this is a, we like use a software. It flip flops our thumbnails every other day. So we don't we don't guess on this stuff. We let the audience choose what's working. And click through rates are very important on YouTube. If you've ever had a video that you thought was really good, but it got zero views, uh, it it. It may not be the video. It could be the thumbnail. If the thumbnail doesn't get the click, nobody will ever watch your video. So we'll test different videos. I mean, for example, like I put this little uh, like this little curse word over my mouth. I thought that that was actually going to be the better thumbnail. And you'll notice we usually just change one thing so we know exactly what we're testing on there. But the original version actually got more click-through rate and it outperformed by 20%. May not seem like much, but that will add up and even compound over time. Uh, this thing, this was very interesting because, you know, Fairview, everybody always calls us and asks us about Frisco. Nobody ever asks about Fairview. There, it's right next door to Frisco. It's got bigger homes, bigger lots, newer community, even a better school system, but it's just kind of like unheard of. And so whenever I put Fairview, Texas on there, it got 1% as to where I put the new Frisco with a question mark and that got 5.3%. That was 387% more clicks than the original. So that's a big deal. Then this last picture, I, I still can't figure out this thumbnail. All I did was add like a, a darker version of me, I guess. I guess nobody likes the strawberry blonde version. But, you know, uh, the funny thing was, is that that was 648% more click through rate than the first one. Now, YouTube likes a click through rate of anywhere from 2 to 10%, or I should say higher than 2%, really. But 2 to 10% is the sweet spot. So if I would have just left this on my original guess, uh, then, you know, it would have never got the initial clicks and YouTube would have never promoted that video. But this one got right in the middle, 5.8%. And that was 648% better. And so that video did very well and YouTube pushed it out. Then you want to look at lead conversion. If you have to do anything twice in your business, you need a system, a process, a campaign, or a trigger, which means I've never sent out a lender recommendation uh, recommendation email more than once. Uh, when some we get asked uh, to be recommended to our lender all the time. Well, if they do that, I wrote the email one time, loaded it into a campaign, and now anytime we move people through our process through our pipeline system in our CRM, 
they get automate automatic emails. So if I move them to sent to lender, automatic email. If I move them to uh, pre uh, approved, uh, pre approved, automatic email. Property alerts, automatic email. They're coming into town, uh, you know, under contract, uh, closed. Doesn't matter. Automatic email. All that's automated, and it goes to all the appropriate parties. So I'm not sitting there typing everything out, you know, email by email every single time. You know, and so then I started to wonder, could I actually do this with some other agents? Could I help build this out with other people as well? And so we started to test this with uh, some other other people around the country. And in Houston, like Kyler, he he posted this started his YouTube journey 10 months ago. Uh, 95 total videos, 4 million impressions, 21, actually 22 homes sold. So he did right around 13 million in volume in his first 10 months of starting his YouTube channel. And he was completely skeptical when we first talked about it. And now he's got a very high performing channel in Houston. Then we even ventured outside the country to Canada. Rochelle up in Toronto started absolutely killing it. Um, she posted this the other day and she's like, in the last seven days, I closed 1.6 million in volume, currently working with a 1.3 million buy sell, had to start a team to help me keep up with leads. And she said, I, I brought on a new agent. She closed four deals in her first month. And in the last nine months, she generated over 200 leads from her YouTube channel. And she did already uh, uh, over six, uh, 200,000 in six months, 200,000 in commissions in six months from her channel. Then you got someone like Chris, who's in Northwest Georgia, one of the smallest markets in the country, very rural, very spread out. But you know what? Nobody was doing YouTube in his area. And he was a nurse during 2020, got burnout, uh, respectively, and decided he wanted to get into real estate, but at the same time had no sales experience and no real estate experience. But he saw what we were doing. So he reached out and was like, hey, I think I could make some videos. Do you think it'll work in my market? We're like, sure, why not? Give it a try. And, you know, he posted this the other day. He said, just got a $1.45 million pre-approved lead in the funnel, already out showing him homes. He, he uh, got closed and under contract and in his pipeline, 5 million in business in his first year. So not the amount of volume we're doing, but he's also not in the size market. But you know what? Chris has four kids. He actually likes being like a stay-at-home dad more than he does a real estate agent. So one transaction a month, it completely uh, fulfills him and, and, you know, satisfies him and his family. Plus his wife works full time. So they're okay. So he's happy with being able to do a consistent transaction or two every month. And all he has to do is make videos. Then you got someone like Jonathan in California, people in California say, well, everybody's leaving California. YouTube's not going to work in my market. He started his channel is last year when the market took a complete nosedive, when everybody disappeared as soon as rates went up to 6%. And he, that's when he started his channel, but that generated him 171,000 in commissions uh, over the last eight months. And he was, he posts stories all the time, but he said uh, he got a deal done in under 24 hours, got a call from the channel, was showing him homes by the next day. And they contracted on a new construction in 24 hours from getting a call. That's how intentional these people are. They will move extremely quickly. And we've had that happen to us. The fastest we've contracted on a house is three hours. Somebody called us and gave us a specific address and said, get me this house. That's what they told us. They had lost out on seven other deals with a different agent. And they said, get me this house. We got it under contract within three hours. So that's the fastest we've done. Uh, but then the success stories just kept coming in. We started helping some more agents and they kept coming in. Uh, Hasna and here she posted $650,000 cash buyer. We met yesterday and already looking at homes. Um, and then you've got Andres, he posted eight months with nine pending, love YouTube and passive prospecting. Uh, Steven said, yeah, it took around six months for my first lead, but right now I got five closed, two pending, six in the pipeline. Just do the work, he says. Uh, Kayla did 75,000 in commissions in nine months. And four of those months, she was on bed rest because she broke a rib during her pregnancy. And she told me that her channel uh, provided for her and her family. She still closed some deals and got leads while she was on bed rest uh, because she had made those videos and they kept working for her, kept prospecting for her. Um, you got Donna on here. Look at this 10 deals uh, in her first year from YouTube. So almost a deal a month. Um, Andy posted this the other day and said, I have a little uh, over a million under contract already. Uh, in his first six months, 18 clients. He's working with 18 clients in his first six months. That's pretty good. And already got some deals under contract. David got his first deal under contract in two months, 430,000. That's faster than we did it. 
Then has, I mean, she's always posting has now again, contact to under contract 10 days. She posted that because I always talk about contact to under contract. These people move fast. People that reach out to you from YouTube are very, very intentional. Uh, Leslie, she posted in here as well. A uh, four day relationship began that we were only virtually part of. Didn't know these people existed. A text and email two days after being contacted and the buyers we met after two days. And because of working through the video, she, she felt like she knew us and trusted us to take care of them. And then they got that under contract uh, uh, within four months, looking at 16 homes, knocked that out. Austin, he posted this, four listing referrals sent at 30%, six buyer consultations, five pre-approved buyers, two buyers under contract, one listing, not a bad week on YouTube. I mean, he did that all in one week and they just keep coming on. Denny did 40, I mean, 140,000 in GCI in his first nine months. Chris just posted, man, he started with 26 subscribers when he met us. And now he has 15 leads come through so far and two under contract. So very, very happy. And we've been able to help uh, more agents do this. And so, you know, we we have a BHAG, right? And this is really not even a lot, but we want to really help 100 people. I know a lot of people will say 1,000 or 10,000 agents I want to help, but we really want, if we could just help a hundred agents change their life, you know, and build their own passive prospecting YouTube channel, then they won't have to worry about other lead generation methods. You can, you can definitely add that to your business or at least let this be a good portion of your business. It doesn't have to be everything. And we are venturing out into other lead generation methods now as well. We want to supplement. We don't want to be a one trick pony, even though we're doing a significant amount of volume. And this year alone, 2023, we've already done over 25 million this year. So we've started off a little slower than last year, but I would say 25 million so far in five months, averaging 5 million a month from YouTube is still not bad, right? Especially since we've done all of this organic with zero ad spend. So that's a big deal. So let me share with you real quick. And I'm going to turn it back over to here to Ricky in just a minute. But I want to share with you a quick story uh, for those that have doubt, okay? Because Ricky said it earlier. He's like, well, Levi, you're nobody special, right? <laughs> but I know he didn't mean it that way. But I know. He said, uh, yeah, I, and I really was. I'm not anybody special. Now, I doubt you've ever charted out your life on a graph. I only did it for this presentation. But it's interesting. If you ever do that, I'm going to assume your life looks a lot like my life, right? It's full of ups and downs but it's the decisions that we make that are going to determine whether we're going to move forward and reach the success that we want to, or we're going to stay put and dig ourselves in a deeper hole. So I've got a really good friend, Michael Reese. Now he's been wanting to get me into real estate for 20 years. We actually sold gym memberships together at Valley Total Fitness, like in 2001. And I remember in 2002, he got licensed in real estate and he wanted me to become an agent in 2002, but I wasn't interested in being an agent. So um, I did technically get licensed in 2004 because he talked me into it. But one week after I got licensed, I was still in the military reserve. So I went into the military. I got out. Uh, Michael was one of my first jobs selling gym memberships when I got out of the military, but I was still in the reserves. And we all know what happened, you know, September 11th. And this was 2004. One week after I got licensed, 2004, I got a call from my captain and said, Levi, you're getting deployed. Report to Fort Hood in four days. They gave me four days to pack my stuff and go down there. And I was gone for 18 months. Now, 12 months of that I spent in Iraq. All right. So uh, this is where I would say I had a, a mental setback because you go through a lot of challenges when you're in a combat zone for a year. OK, it's not easy. Um, you, you'll see here like this, this upper right hand picture that's in the middle of a sandstorm, a three day sandstorm. That picture is not doctored or edited in any way. That's what it was like. We were breathing in sand stuck in your ears, your eyes, everything for three days. It's, it's a mess, but also, uh, you know, you're in a constant state of anxiety and it's just, it's not fun. And the thing is, is that we lost a couple of our team members while we were in Iraq as well. And in Iraq, you don't get days off. You don't get time to feel sorry for yourself. Uh, you don't get time to mourn. You have to complete the mission. You don't get to just lay around in bed one day and say, I don't feel like going to work. Every person in that unit is depending on you to get up, to do your best and to, you know, uh, push your feelings down, right? Despite losing somebody the next day or the day before, you have to go out in the exact same environment. And so we just learned how to work through those challenges. It wasn't easy. The other problem was, is I started really getting bad digestive problems. Sorry, TMI, but I started really having bad stomach issues 
while I was in Iraq. And I came home with a really bad digestive disease. And that messed with me for about eight years until, uh, until 2013 came. And then I ended up losing 50 pounds in a single month. And I became completely bedridden and disabled. This nearly killed me. And I went to four different GI doctors. Uh, they threw the kitchen sink at me with medications, uh, IV antibiotics, steroids, all kinds of things. They could not get me better for three months. This was the most excruciating pain and agony I went through. I didn't think I was going to make it. And it was by God's grace, I found a natural doctor and the natural doctor was like, let's change your diet and put you on some vitamins. And I was like, wait, what? That's it. And within three weeks, I started to get better after three months of, of complete hell and suffering. And it ended up taking me a full year to recover, but I was able to recover 100 percent natural with zero medication and zero surgery. And it's been 10 years now, 10 years with no signs or symptoms or issues Ricky was asking me about my protein. You know, I'm kind of like Benjamin Button. I'm 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 reversing an age right now, right? So I think I look a little better at 43 than I did at 33, right? So this prompted me to travel the world. I realized I'd almost died a couple of times in my life, and I had never been anywhere ever. You know, I was like that small town uh, country boy. I grew up in this small town uh, south of Dallas, a couple of hours. You know, if you're not milking cows or riding bulls, not much else to do there. And I was like, I got to get out and see the world. And so I started traveling, went to 24 countries inside of three years, started a financial services business. And I was working with all the teachers on their retirement planning for Dallas ISD. Well, then April of 2020 came and the world shuts down. Right. And the two things that I loved, which was working with teachers at schools and, uh, you know, traveling completely taken away from me. So I, that's where I had to figure out what's, uh, what's, what's my next move. I was 41 years old. I was like, how do I start over with starting over? So I invested that summer, uh, as I mentioned a little bit in the very beginning there, I invested that summer a lot. I started investing in Amazon stores because I thought Amazon was going to be amazing during, uh, you know, COVID, which it was, but Amazon stores were not okay for the individual business owner. Uh, I, I, I wired out, these are wires, $40,000 to buy into the store, 25,000 in inventory, 13,500. I, I bought into a mastermind, 17,500. Then in uh, August, I wired out another 65,000 on a second store. I thought they, I was so committed to thinking this was going to work. I, I put all my chips on the table because I didn't want to be a real estate agent. And shortly after that, well, I invested over $200,000 of my cash into that. And I realized that nothing was coming back. I have invested in some real estate investing courses, but what did I learn from those courses that you've got a cold call and door knock and send out mailers and, you know, look for the homes with really tall grass and that was just something I was like, I, I don't know. I don't really want to do that. So that's whenever I, I first started looking into social. And that's whenever I figured out uh, YouTube was a search engine, not a social platform. So I still really didn't want to be involved in social. But I realized, OK, YouTube's a search engine. Maybe I can make videos that people are searching for versus being a dancing real estate agent on TikTok. But, you know, here's the deal. By the time I started this in December, I was out of money. I was completely out of money. And this was the first time the government ever approved unemployment for 1099 contractors because I was a 1099 contractor with my business for the last five years. And so I thought, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going all in on YouTube, but I'm, I was out of money. So I was like, maybe if I apply for this, I'll get approved. And I got approved. They only paid me like a couple, like 2000 a month. And I only took it for about three months, but it was just enough to pay a couple of bills to help me get through those first three months of no transactions. As soon as I got that first deal under transaction from YouTube, I immediately canceled this unemployment. And I promised myself I would never, ever go back to unemployment ever again. And I didn't. You can see that's my whole 1099 from the government for 2021. So I started 2021 on unemployment and I ended 2021 with a million seven thousand in commissions from real estate from YouTube. And then that's gotten me a little bit of a, some recognition and allowed me to meet some of the best marketers, uh, YouTubers, uh, real estate agents on the planet, including Ricky. And uh, I'm, I'm so honored to be here. It's amazing, but uh, I, I don't take this lightly. And so that's why hopefully uh, this is making an impact with you. And what I can stress for you as I close this up is that You've got to choose your hard, right? It's hard working out, but to me, it's a lot harder being sick. It's hard owning a business, but to me, it's a lot harder uh, having a job. 
and it's hard making videos. But to me, it's a lot harder making calls. All right. So I would rather make videos, but I know the value of a video because in 2021, I made 160 videos and that generated a million seven thousand in commissions. So that's like making sixty three hundred dollars a video. Now, if I offered you sixty three hundred dollars to video, would you make a video? But in 2022, I actually made less videos, but made more money, twice as much. So that was like making $15,000 of video. And if I offered you $15,000 of video, would you make a video? Could you find a way to get over your fear or anxiety or, uh, you know, just discomfort of doing that and work through it? I bet you would, but that's not the value in the beginning. You have to build up to that, but it can compound. And it really comes down to what you believe. And I believe if you're not where you're at or where you want to be, it's just because you haven't learned something yet. But I believe you can hyper learn any subject in 60 days. And I believe if you take massive action focused on that one thing, that one thing can completely change your business. And this was uh, something uh, that I always stress is that, look, it took me 22 years to be an overnight success. A lot of ups and downs along the way. But what I want you to notice about the ups is they're always a lot higher than the down. So every time I had a downturn or a, a, a major setback, I came back stronger. And that's what you can do as well. One last thing I'll share with you is I wrote this on April 1st of 2021 when I closed that very first deal from YouTube. I had no idea the business we were going to do, but I write out my goals every day. And I wrote this out. I earned 1.2 million in GCI from living in Dallas. I had no idea if that would ever come true, but I wrote it every single day for 2021. And I didn't hit 1.2, but I hit a million seven. So I would say that was pretty close enough. And so if you want to learn more, I want to thank Ricky for inviting me on his uh, call today and his platform. And if you want to learn more how you can implement this in your business, then just scan the QR code. I think there will be a link in the chat possibly as well. You can book a call, see if maybe this is a good fit for you and your market. Uh, I know we can help you out if you want to make a change or do something different in your business. So thank you all. And uh, Ricky, you want to get to some questions? Yeah, man. Thank you for that emotional um, presentation. Honestly, you know, you took us there, you you dropped us off, you left us for dead, you came back, you <laughs> we laughed, we cried, we all that good stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, um, let's see. I'll put the QR code back up for you guys to scan that. Also put a link in the description and also put it in the chat there. Levi has this company, um, passive prospecting, they will help you build out your channel um, coaching, uh, editing your videos, strategy, building out your channel, the whole nine yards. Okay. And I wouldn't have brought Le Levi up here if I didn't feel like I'm actually using these guys to edit some of my videos. Awesome. All right. So link is there in the description. There's the QR code. Let me know if you guys need that. Um, you guys throw us some questions in the comments. Let's see where you guys are with the. Did you use a videographer? Uh, what did you record your videos with? Yeah, thanks, Jackie. I recorded everything with an iPhone. <laughs> so wow. you don't need fancy equipment. Now, uh, I use an iPhone and I still use an iPhone 11 Pro. So it, it does need to be a pro. It needs that third camera. It needs that wide angle camera. That's really great for doing outside video. But I did office videos with my iPhone as well. I would set it up on a tripod right in front of me and and make videos with a with the ring light. I mean, super simple. That's uh, really the lowest cost you can do it. Now, make sure you do have a good microphone. So I would invest in a good microphone because audio is key. But otherwise, you can find a good microphone from anywhere from $50 to $100. Uh, we do have a videographer now, but I upgraded after a year, after we had generated you know, quite a bit of income and we, we had a budget for that. And that was really to do higher end properties. As we started to get into million dollar plus homes, I just felt like it, we needed to step up the production a little bit versus doing it on an iPhone. So that's when we brought on a videographer. Gotcha, man. How many people's on your team? So we have about 10 agents now. 10? Cool. Yep. Nice. And Do we, you... we had to build that out of necessity because we could not handle the leads, Travis and I. We, we went up until the point when it was just like, we can't do it. <laughs> you know, it was getting too much. 
Yeah, I mean, especially when it's 98.8% buyers. Yeah. All right. Um, do you run ads? That was all organic. I've never run a single ad for our YouTube channel. Cool, cool. Um, are you running ads on your videos to make YouTube ad revenue? So uh, I so we when we were monetized, I turned it on, but I turned off videos in mid roll. So you actually make the most money uh, for mid roll ads, but I want the viewer to have an uninterrupted experience as they're watching the video. So I turn it off mid roll, and YouTube's going to place ads on the front and back end of your video regardless. It doesn't yeah. matter. So I do yeah. mon I do monetize that, but. Um, I think you saw on the slide probably uh, last year we made like 4,000 in ad revenue. It's not a big deal. The goal is not ad revenue. The goal yeah. is to sell real estate. Yeah, for sure. Build yeah. your business. Yep. How do you find the right keywords? Uh, so we use that, we use that software. It's called TubeBuddy, and uh, that's what we use to, to A-B test thumbnails. We can A-B test titles. We can research keywords, uh, all that stuff inside there. Okay. Okay, let's see. Can you get seller leads too? Oh yeah, just we buyer leads. Yeah, no, we definitely are getting seller leads now as well. I think that takes a little bit more time to build up, um, you know, because most of the time, local people looking to sell their home are not necessarily searching the area about where to live, right? They just go drive somewhere, you know, if they want to uh, do that. But we are generating a lot more buzz and getting a lot more local recognition. So we are getting more listing leads now. And plus by featuring listings on our channel, that does attract other sellers as well. Quality over quantity. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wait, I mean, you saw we, uh, you know, we closed around, 10%, you know, last year conversion rate, which is pretty good. Most online lead sources, if you were to buy Facebook leads or something like that, are really in the low 1% range. So, you know, we would close one out of 10 people we spoke to versus one out of a hundred. Got you. Got you. Michael, I couldn't tell which one of us you were talking to. What's your production look like this year? Can't seem to find any data. Are you still working as a realtor? Do you just coach? Now, I don't know if that's for me or for you. Uh, well, I can answer that. Yeah, I can, yeah, answer, I can that. answer too. <laughs> uh, I can answer that. So the thing, the funny thing is, is I've had this come up. People will be like, well, I looked on Realtor. I looked on Zillow. I don't see any sales data for you. Well, we've never used those platforms. Uh, I've never mm -hmm. bought leads from them. And you have to link your MLS uh, to those platforms. So I don't link my MLS. Plus, uh, the reality is, is that I only get a portion. So really, because I have a business partner, plus we have team members, I collect 25% on every deal. Now that's made me an icon agent, you know, with our brokerage. So, you know, and they only award that for production, but you'll only see if you find any trackable numbers for me, it's only going to be 25% of the total sales volume because half goes in my business partner's name and the other 50% goes in our, in our team's name. I'm not, I'm not the agent that collects everything myself and then pays out the agents. We just do straight splits. Yeah. Let's see. Lee here. What's up? My guy from Australia asked him about spending on ads. Do you regularly promote existing YouTube? So he doesn't do any ads. Nope. Lee, it's all 100% organic, which is what I do. I don't run any ads. I, I tried ads a couple times here and there, but you know, um, when you're a free coach, <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't have any kind yeah. of product on the back end. Uh, are you integrating life? as well or just strictly real estate stuff great great question cassie uh no <laughs> not really so i think i think if you you want to provide value to the viewer and i think if, if you're not ryan serhant i don't think people are really that interested in your life as much as we want them to be we want people to be attracted to the information versus us they'll develop the relationship with us but if the first video they find is the day in the life of levi as a real estate agent mm. that's not doesn't really serve them right they want to know hey i'm about to make a move or move my family across country yeah. or you know i need i need some i need some information not yeah. here, I am, here i am making my coffee in the morning you know so yeah. Uh, now, if you're Ryan Serhant and you're nationally syndicated on a TV show and you've been there for 10 years, then people get interested in your personal life. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. Now, this is what I like to say. Incorporate, don't dedicate. So you can incorporate things about your life. And that does help people develop more of a relationship with you, which means 
usually when I'm out doing a vlog tour, I'll stop in a local coffee shop, get an iced Americano. It gets a little hot in Dallas, you know, so I'm always kind of like, oh, just grab my iced Americano. So people know I liked iced Americanos, but I don't make an entire video about coffee shops because nobody moves to an area wondering about restaurants or coffee shops, because I think most people assume wherever they move to, there will be good restaurants and coffee shops. They're more worried about the area, the safety, the schools, you know, uh, the commute. That's what they're concerned about. Yeah. So Rayleigh's, Raylene here wants me to text that QR code. I'm watching on my phone and can't scan. Just click the little button to go into the description here of the video. And the link is right there. You just click on it. And boom, you can set a, a call up with Levi and they can get you guys started. Cool. All right, guys, we got a roll here. So if we had, we had we had a ton of questions coming in. So if we didn't get to your question, um, maybe throw it in the comments after we're live. This this video would just stay right here on this link um, or reach out to me. You can DM me. You can reach out to Levi um, or just set a call up and. Um, you know, sit down with the team and see what it is, get all your questions answered and let these guys help you build out your YouTube so that you can start getting all these leads and closing all these deals. I always say make all make your calls in the morning and do all your social media in the afternoon. Bam. Best of both worlds. If you're getting so many leads from YouTube that you're doing in the afternoons that, you know, you've got enough people to call all morning. Awesome. Call all the leads that you're getting on YouTube in the morning. Make more videos in the afternoon. Call them in the morning, make them in the afternoon, whatever. But anyway, man, uh, appreciate your time today, man. This was really, really insightful. And I uh, got a lot out of this, as I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. And um, we appreciate your service um, and coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Ricky. Huge yeah, honor. Bro. Appreciate you, man. Talk to everybody soon. You guys have a good, uh, strong finish of the week.